Today we want to talk to you about one of the most addicting molecules in the world. Yet this compound might have some fascinating benefits to our brain, which may matter for things like Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and frankly just overall cognitive function. Today on Don't Look Up, we're going to dive into nicotine. Welcome back everybody to Don't Look Up, where we encourage you to look up. I'm Boomer Anderson, Chief Executive Officer of Smarter Not Harder in Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. I'm Dr. Scott Scher. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Transcriptions, as well as the Chief Operating Officer of Health Optimization Medicine and Practice. I'm also an internal medicine physician, and I used to be very scared of nicotine too, Boomer, I have to tell you. Yeah, well, growing up, you and I were sort of dare children, yes. right? This meant that we had police officers coming to our, our schools. And arresting parents. You know, well, yeah. maybe arresting parents if your parents were one of those people. I remember distinctly getting educated growing up as to why drugs are bad. I, I also remember the ads were like, this is your brain, crack an egg into a pan and then scramble it. This is your brain on drugs. We were also told that nicotine is just absolutely evil. Of course, that was associated nicotine with cigarettes. And yes, nicotine is incredibly addictive, but it also doesn't tell the full story around cigarettes. In fact, nicotine is not the most toxic thing in there. What else is in cigarettes? Yeah, so when you're looking at doctors used to smoke camels as their preferred brand of cigarettes. Cigarette companies for long periods of time were hiding literature showing that there's an increase of things like lung cancer, for example, bladder cancer, other cancers, colon cancer related to smoking. But the key to understand the difference between nicotine as a molecule versus a cigarette or a tobacco containing product is that not only do those have nicotine in them, but they also have other additives that make them more highly addictive by a long shot. And in fact, over years and years, the nicotine plants had actually been grown to be more addictive because having more of these additives and having more nicotine in there. For example, if you have a cigar, it's got about 100 milligrams of nicotine in it. Which the LD50 of nicotine is approaching that number. So yeah. I want to kind of go back and also talk a little bit about well, cigarettes also contain things like tar and you know other toxins that huge amount of carcinogens thousands led to the states where people get lung cancer right right there's a discussion here to be had around delivery mechanism right. and why you know smoking or vaping is actually more addictive right but let's get into nicotine itself what is nicotine and how does it actually work in the body so nicotine binds to a receptor in the brain called the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. And what happens is when nicotine binds to this receptor, it floods the system with acetylcholine, dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, and even a little bit of GABA too, actually. So it's kind of like an all-encompassing neurotransmitter release. And in kind of in a balanced way, the faster you take the nicotine, so you talk about vaping and smoking, the more dopamine you're going to get, the faster it hits your body. So that's why the delivery mechanism is really, really important. If you're smoking it or vaping it, that's going to hit you directly very, very quickly. And that dopaminergic reward signal is going to get up very, very high very quickly. Nicotine is also short acting with a half-life of about an hour or two. And so you get this high rise and all of a sudden it comes down very quickly. So you want more. And this is why cigarettes, vaping products are extremely, extremely addictive because of that dopaminergic rise. In essence, when you have all these neurotransmitters coming out at the same time, you have a very profound effect on your neurophysiology. As a person who uses nicotine probably pretty regularly at this point, we're talking about attention, focus. What are some of the other benefits? That yeah, so we have attention, focus, memory, cognitive processing, the ability to learn new information. This is all happening because of that neurotransmitter ecosystem and balance that have changed to more of a learning environment. So it's really important not only to talk about the mechanism, about nicotine itself, but the dosing is really important, okay? Low doses of nicotine, less than about four or five milligrams per day, are very rarely going to have any addiction potential, especially if you're not vaping or smoking. These low doses, they're helping on that neurotransmitter optimization, that neurotransmitter balance, in a way that's giving you the capacity for memory, for focus, for learning, for recall, for verbal fluidity. And as a result of that, you, know, you have this fantastic effect on cognitive function. So it's not actually just a discussion around cognitive benefits. There's physical benefits. You can use it for exercise. Looking also at the anti-inflammatory yeah. effects of nicotine. Most people think of it as a cognitive enhancer if they think about it at all outside of being addicting and dangerous. But the other aspect of this, which is really important, is that it decreases inflammation in the brain. It does it specifically by working on those acetylcholine receptors that we talked about and decreasing the production of something called NF-kappa B. NF-kappa B is one of our main inflammatory signalers. When NF-kappa B goes up in the brain or anywhere, it increases inflammation. It increases cytokine release like TNF-alpha, IL-1, IL-6. And what you can do if you downregulate 
or decrease the amount of TNF alpha that's being made and IL-1 and IL-6, you're going to have decreased inflammation in the brain. And, we, and I've seen this real time in clinical practice where you can use nicotine for the cognitive enhancement side of things at these low doses, less than four milligrams a day. And at the same time, people's brains start working better. They have this capacity then to start detoxing and start being able to optimize their function. And one of the main cells that gets activated when we have inflammation in the brain is called our microglia. Our microglia are part of our brain. They're like our immune system cells for our brain. They're actually kind of like macrophages, which is a type of white blood cell, but they were developed specifically to be our immune surveillance in the brain. And what can happen is that they're typically there hanging out, doing their thing. But if you have an infection, you have inflammation, they get more active and try to help battle that infection. And what happens is that they can get overstimulated and cause a significant amount of inflammation in the brain. And what nicotine can do by modulating that acetylcholine receptor is downregulate the and dampen that inflammatory response from the microglia. So you have less inflammation in the brain because you're upregulating, or sorry, excuse me, you're downregulating the NF-kappa B pathways, and you're also mitigating the stress on the microglia itself. And in addition, there's something called the cholinergic anti-inflammatory reflex. And this is when our vagus nerve, so our vagus nerve is our primary nerve coming from the brain that actually modulates our parasympathetic nervous system. The vagus nerve works on acetylcholine. And so the vagus nerve itself is attached to almost every organ that we have and regulates the capacity for it to relax, to calm down. And acetylcholine actually is the main neurotransmitter that works on the vagus nerve. So more acetylcholine, as a result, is going to modulate the vagus nerve. And if you can modulate the, the vagus nerve in a way that increases its tone, you're gonna have decreased inflammation throughout the whole body as well. A couple of fascinating studies that I think are an aside to this. They're really done in mouse models, I believe, at this point. But people looking at nicotine for things like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. Uh, do you want to go into a little bit about what we know there? Yeah, I mean, there's some human, human studies too on, on in Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and also in MS as well. There is some indication, even in human studies, that nicotine can help memory, cognition, focus, and overall cognitive function, or everything we just discussed here, right? We're increasing that nicotinyl acetylcholine receptor's capacity to make those neurotransmitters, and also at the same time, downregulate inflammation. And what happens oftentimes with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, is that you have this significant amount of microglial activation, those cells, those immune cells in our brain, you cannot tamp it down. You cannot get it to go down. And so there's a number of different ways to have or use nicotine. We can talk about that outside of smoking and vaping. The key again is slow release, low dose, because the dose really is important. If you're taking too high of amount of nicotine, you can have the opposite effect. You can have a detrimental effect on, on inflammation, detrimental effect on neurotransmitters and depletion of these over time. It can time. feel a little bit like an overload almost. Yeah, yeah. Almost yeah. as if you've taken too much coffee, right? Yeah. Uh, for those of us that get caffeine jitters as well. Let's go a little bit into, you know, those delivery mechanisms. Yeah. We've talked a little bit about vaping, smoking, and why those... The, they increase so much dopamine so fast and it causes you to effectively want bumps throughout the day. But what other delivery mechanisms are available to us that might be a little bit safer to play around with? Yeah, so in clinical practice, there's a couple of different ways we can look at this. Uh, there are patches. So nicotine patches, been around for a long time as a smoking replacement, but we're actually seeing these being used now in the integrative medical functional health optimization spaces because you can use the patches at low doses for a low grade amount of nicotine that's being released for about 12 hours. And that can be a great way to get a nicotine support and have the, the benefits that we're talking about. You also can get it in a lozenge. So that you can get nicotine lozenges that you can kind of suck on. There's gum as well. And then there's of course trochies in which we make it transcriptions, which we designed to have a combination of ingredients and they're not just the nicotine because and in, in essence, what nicotine is, is a performance optimizing nootropic, which means that it helps the brain perform better a task, but it may not be always healthy for the brain as well, especially depending on where you're starting. Because if you have all these neurotransmitters being released, are you able to maintain that even at low doses? Some people can't. And so having supportive ways of optimizing brain function at the same time as 
thinking about nicotine is how we developed uh, a product called Blue Canotine, which has nicotine, caffeine, but also CBD and methylene blue, which are much more supportive for the brain. So a trochee is nice because it's dissolved up in your mouth and it dissolves over about 15 to 30 minutes. So it's not an immediate effect, but it's pretty fast. Yeah. Like even within about five to 10 minutes, you're going to start feeling the nicotine. Yeah. Tablet. So it's not like when I take the spray and you get the hit and it's, I remember you know, times where Dr. Scott here will try the spray and you get the sound effects, right? <laughs> <laughs> but also you have a trochee that dissolves. It's yeah. just that circulatory structure of the brain. And it's sort of a, a nice, easy onset. Yeah. I want, I want to go into stacks because people love stacks, right? Yeah. So nicotine and caffeine is a fairly popular stack around this sort of cognitive enhancement crowd. Why? I mean, it's, it's because caffeine makes you more wakeful. It blocks what are called the adenosine receptors in your brain. In the brain, it makes you feel sleepy, gives you that sleep drive, that sleep pressure. The more exercise that you do, the more fatigued you are typically in the evenings because you build up a lot of this adenosine. We make energy, adenosine triphosphate, and when you're making a lot of that, you also make more of it adenosine, and that helps you build up and feel sleepier. So caffeine gives you more wakefulness. It also works as an antioxidant and, it and supports the system to some degree, but for the most part, it's going to leverage some of those same neurotransmitters by making you feel more wakeful. So norepinephrine, uh, epinephrine, dopamine specifically, along with, but, and the, but you have the nicotine port, which is even more enhanced compared to caffeine with some of those neurotransmitters. So the combination is very powerful as a stack for, for focus. And then we added methylene blue into CB and CBD into something that Scott mentioned earlier, blue canatine. How do those play sort of a synergistic role here? So the methylene blue is great because it, it actually works on energy production and also detoxification at the same time. So you get the energy enhancement neurotransmitter piece as well because methylene blue helps release some of those norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin specifically. So you get the extra mood, you get the extra boost in cognition, extra focus, memory, endurance as well. But at the same time, you're also getting some support there. So not only are you increasing energy production, but you're also increasing the capacity for detoxification. And CBD is the same thing. CBD works on the GABA receptors and the serotonin receptors, as well as the endocannabinoid receptors in our brain, which are kind of like our homeostatic balancing system to help balance the inflammatory cascades that happen when you make more energy. And protect the brain so they're neuroprotective and so there's no come down or crash and there's a very slow rise and gentle rise with bucanatine on both ends because you have the cbd and methylene blue on board and so i mean we're huge fans of nicotine on its own as well for you know for very short acting kinds of things and let's talk about, you know, people listening to this. If they wanted to explore nicotine, first, the types of people that should avoid us. I, I'm guessing people who have had uh, issues smoking, smoking issues, through yeah. addiction yeah. Uh, in the past. If you have a highly addictive personality, tread carefully here. But if you're going to give somebody like a protocol uh, to look at nicotine, what would you what would you kind of guide them towards? Low dose is so important less than four milligrams a day. Most of the tobacco replacement drugs or compounds out there start off at about two milligrams, which if you've never had nicotine before, you take two milligrams, you are not going to feel good because- It doesn't feel good. Yeah. Those gums are just sometimes atrocious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so what can happen is you get the jitteriness, you get, um, you get really sort of overstimulated, and you can get diarrhea from it too. Uh, it's actually quite common if you take too much nicotine. So the key is to start off at very low doses a half a milligram, maybe a milligram, and then from there see what seems to work for you. And then, then decide on the kind of mechanisms or the kind of delivery that you're really interested in. There are gums and you can kind of break up the gums into smaller pieces. There's obviously trochees that we make. Um, there's patches out there as well that I mentioned. There's also these pouches. So there's, uh, there are companies that are making these lower dosed patches of nicotine too, which are okay. Just have to watch out for the fillers that are in these kinds of things. Um, some of the newer patches out there, are, excuse me, the newer pouches are better, but we're not talking about like snuff here. Okay. Like a snuff pouch, which like these, like snooze and things like that, they're using much higher amounts of nicotine in them than you need. Again, keeping the dose low is such an important piece here because the dose makes the poison and nicotine is a, a fantastic example of this. Uh, lower doses, anti-inflammatory, neuroprotective, um, help with those neurotransmitter releases for cognition, for memory, for focus, but too much is gonna have the, a negative effect on your physiology in the opposite way. 
So too little, of, too much of a good thing is too much of a good thing sometimes. Yeah. So let, let's wrap this up in this fascinating discussion around nicotine. So today we talked about nicotine, why it was demonized before, perhaps rightly, perhaps wrongly, why low-dose nicotine might be the path forward. We talked about how nicotine worked in the brain on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, how it interacts with the vagus nerve, and also is a neuro-anti-inflammatory. And we actually got into a little bit of like how you may want to approach this fascinating, oftentimes misunderstood compound in a very smart and health optimal way. Anything else we want to... Just as a reminder, please don't vape or smoke anything. This is not good to do that. Your lungs do not like high heat and lots of compounds going in immediately. Um, it's too fast acting. Um, I know some people will use vaping products for things like THC and others, and there might be reasons for that under certain circumstances. But in general, avoid smoking and vaping, especially nicotine, because yes, it's one of the most addictive things on the planet, especially at high doses, and especially if you vape it and smoke it. This has been another episode of Don't Look Up, where we encourage you to look up and have an essence of an empowered responsibility about your health. Today we discussed nicotine, and if you enjoyed this episode, smash that like button, leave a comment, please, subscribe. We'll bring more information to you on a weekly basis about topics like nicotine, uh, methylene blue, mitochondrial function, and so much more. Thank you for tuning in.